Now, when it comes to watches, there are a bunch of unspoken or even loudly spoken watch rules and ways you are meant to wear a watch. I am quite the traditionalist. My tastes lean more subdued and traditional, and I generally follow all of the unspoken rules of wearing a wristwatch. But you know, there are some watch rules that I think are pretentious, outdated, and absolutely worth ignoring, or at least putting your own mustard on. So here's six watch rules I think you should ignore. Number one, you should always wear your watch on the left wrist. This is a rule that some watch collectors are weirdly passionate about, and I don't understand why. People tend to wear their watch on their non-dominant wrist, so it doesn't get in the way of everyday activities like writing, maybe using a kitchen knife, play fighting with your cat, etc. And since 85% to 90% of people are right-handed, a majority of people wear their watch on their left hand. But there's still so many watch lovers who think it's wrong to wear your watch on your right hand or on your right wrist. I personally think it's kind of silly to dictate to people which hand they should wear their own personal possessions on. You should wear your watch however it is comfortable for you. I'd recommend wearing on your non-dominant hand to prevent any unnecessary damage, but it's your watch. Wear it however you're comfortable. Some people double wrist. Some people are right-handed but have a left-hand drive watch. It's your watch. It's you who has to wear it all day. Wear it however is comfortable for you. Number two rule you should ignore is that you shouldn't wear your bracelet too loose. Well, oh, okay, this one does actually hold a little bit of water. You shouldn't wear your bracelet too loose. It shouldn't be able to slip off your hand if you were doing a duck puppet show. I think the great Andrew Morgan said that. That's an Andrew Morgan quote. But aside from that, there isn't a set looseness that it should or shouldn't be. You don't want it to be so tight that it's cutting off circulation, but there isn't a right or wrong tightness. Once again, I'm quite classical. I wear my watch just above my wrist bone and I prefer it snug. But I was recently out for breakfast with one of my watch collecting friends and he commented that I wear my watch bracelet quite tight. And I looked at his and I thought he was wearing his a little bit on the loose side. Not crazy loose, just a bit looser than I would wear mine. Once again, it's just a comfort thing. My recommendation would be that it shouldn't be so loose that the dial can swing around to the other side of your wrist. Other than that, you do you. Number three, men can't wear diamonds or watch enthusiasts shouldn't like diamonds or gem setting. So there's a big stigma and distaste for diamonds and gem setting. And I think it's just silly. I have a few friends who love some good gem setting and even my husband isn't afraid to rock a diamond. In fact, we recently went shopping and my husband saw a Ladies Patek World Timer 7130G and absolutely fell in love with it. Truth be told, diamonds aren't usually my thing, and even I kinda loved it. As much as we wanna believe that the history of wristwatch and wristwatch heritage begins and ends with tool watches, it simply doesn't. Gem setting and enameling is some of the most classical forms of watchmaking there is, and it shouldn't be written off. Plus, even if you're the biggest tool watch lover there ever was, you can't tell me that the Rolex Daytona with baguette diamonds isn't dang lovely. Now, before we get into the next watch rule you should probably ignore, we need to take a moment to thank today's gorgeous, fabulous video sponsor, Kudos. Navigating the world of credit card rewards and benefits is a nightmare. It's never been something that I've been good at, but as I'm trying to be smarter with my money, it's something that I need help with. Wouldn't it be great if someone could tell you which card to use, for what purchase, and when, so you could know when you have the opportunity to earn more and never miss out? This is where today's fabulous video sponsor comes in, kudos. And stick with me here because they're giving Brit Pierce viewers $20 back. Get in. So if you're not as familiar with kudos, they are a free internet browser extension that helps you get the most out of your credit cards whenever you shop online. How it works is that at the checkout, kudos automatically appears, recommends the best card for you to get the most rewards, and even doubles your earnings on over 15,000 sites. That means if you earn a total of 3% on Walmart, you now earn a total of 6% rewards with kudos. Now you might be thinking, this all sounds great, Brittany, but how much does it cost? Nothing. Kudos is completely free. There are no hidden costs. They instead earn a small commission whenever you shop at one of their partnered sites. So it costs you nothing. You get maximum rewards. How can you beat that? 
Kudos works on all major desktop browsers and your iPhone. Just click the link below and use code BRIT to get Kudos for free today. And so they know I sent you. And to sweeten the deal, Kudos is giving my viewers 2,000 points after your first eligible purchase, which is the equivalent to getting $20 back. Once again, code BRIT on the link below. And thank you so much to Kudos for sponsoring today's video. Now, back to watch rules you should just ignore. Number four, you shouldn't wear a watch in black tie. Now this is a hot debate, but I think the rule that you shouldn't wear a watch in a black tie setting is a bit out of date and not really relevant for the modern world. Staunch traditionalists will say you should not wear a watch at all with black tie and it is considered rude to be checking the time. You should be enjoying yourself and not worried about the time. But it's not Downton Abbey times anymore, baby. I beg your pardon. Time to get over this one. <laughs> I don't think any modern hosts would be opposed to you wearing a dress watch to a black tie affair. Safest choice is always something two hands and understated. Something like a Cartier tank. But you know, I'm going to take this a step further with number five, and I can already feel people getting mad at me in the comment section. So I'll brace myself. Number five rule to ignore, you shouldn't wear a sports watch in black tie. I know. I know. I, this is a new revelation for me. I've changed a bit here. I don't think wearing a sports watch to a black tie affair is the giant faux pas that some traditionalists think that it is. Would I personally do it? <laughs> no. <laughs> it just doesn't fit my style. I would always wear a dress watch to a black tie affair because I also love dress watches. But do I think it's wrong if someone's wearing a Submariner or a Seamaster? No. I don't even care. <laughs> I've been to a few too many black tie events because my husband's in the military, which comes with a lot of formal events. And I've seen people wearing Submariners and Seamasters at these events. I've even seen them, <laughs> I've seen them wear pretty chunky garments as well. I didn't, I don't like the garments. That might be a step too far for me. But you know, people want to look their best. They're putting their best, their finest watches on. Their most expensive timepieces. And for a lot of people, that is a sportier watch. They're trying to put their best foot forward. And I think it still looks good. Or they're wearing their sporty watches because that suits their style more. They're a sporty guy or sporty gal. And they still want that to shine through, even in black tie. I think you'd have to be a pretty horrible snob to see a problem with that. It's your watch. It's your outfit. Wear what you want. Wear what makes you feel like a million bucks. I kind of like the juxtaposition of wearing an out of place watch as well. For example, I wear my Cartier tank with sweatpants all the time. I recently went to a wedding as well. I was wearing a nicer dress and I put on my Rolex Oyster Perpetual and thought it looked kind of cool and sporty. At the end of the day, it's only a watch. If I was hosting a black tie event, I don't care what watch you wear. I just want you to be there. I want you to be there. I want you to feel comfortable. And I want you to wear something that feels authentic and right to you. I don't care what watch you're wearing, as long as you're present. Last but not least, number six, men need to buy certain watch sizes. <laughs> Saving my biggest pet peeve for last. Men and women, you don't need to buy any watch size. There is no correct size for anyone. One of my least favorite things to read in my comment section is 36 millimeters. Uh, real men only wear over 40 millimeters. 38 millimeters? Does it come in men's? <laughs> good one. <laughs> Ignore this. Wear whatever looks good on your wrist. A million different people have a million different wrist shapes, wrist sizes, ways that watches look you know, their, their own unique styles. I love seeing a man rocking a smaller watch. If he loves it, if it feels right for him, go for it. And women can wear cocktail watches or giant pilots watches. Once again, who has time or energy to care about this? Just let people live their lives. Let them collect the watches that make them happy and look good on their wrist. They might have a smaller wrist. One point of clarification is that I'm not off put by brands putting their watches into categories of men's and women's. I think it is the brand communicating who their target audience is. 
just as long as people know they aren't limited to just that. You don't have to be like, oh, I'm a man. I can't shop in the women's section. Oh no, the 36 millimeters is listed as a woman's watch, so I can't wear it. Or ladies, on the other hand, you know, I go shopping in the men's section all the time. I know lots of watch geek girls do. Even as I said before, my husband recently fell in love with a lady's Patek. It doesn't mean anything. It just suits his wrist. It made him feel great. And it makes it easy for me to steal if he'll just fund it. <laughs> Grow up, wear whatever you like, and don't try to emasculate people because they like smaller watches. But anyways, those are the six watch rules I think you should ignore. Is there any watch wearing or buying rules you think are dumb? Let me know in those comments down below. Thank you once again to Kudos for sponsoring this video and don't forget to go click that link below to get $20 back. And now let's thank the gorgeous, fabulous, wonderful, never done anything wrong in their lives ever. Pope to your patrons. Now I was recently asked at a Gringo live stream to bring back the Pope to Patron song. I think we all know this is really a singing channel. Thank you, Facetto. <laughs> Thank you, Pope to Patrons. You're the best. You're the greatest. Now let's see how low we can go. Thank you, Pope to Patrons. Thank you, all to Patrons. You're the best, you're the greatest. Thanks guys, I have the best patrons in the world. I hope you keep enjoying my content. Bye guys.